Alrighty. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kyle here. Um, I want to talk about this. Uh, I've mean, been meaning to talk about it for well, since, ever since Sting um, debuted on WWE television last week. Or, yeah, last week. Um, I just kind of want to talk about my thoughts on, uh, you know, Sting. How my concerns about Sting um, being in WWE in terms of how how would they use him? How well would they use him? Will they, you know, um, treat him with respect and, you know, take good care of him? Or would they do him like they've done so many other uh, WCW uh, superstars who came to that company and just bury him? Um, so I want to talk about that. I also want to talk about my how I think Sting is kind of smart and how he's playing his cards um, and signing with WWE. Um, and I also want to give my rebuttal against people who have been negative, some negative things, some negative things uh, in terms of Sting and his age and all that other stuff. Um, so first off, um, how well do I think WWE used Sting? I don't know. Um, my brother from another mother across the pond, uh, Buff Been Stuffed, uh, had talked about this very thing similar, um, last week, um, he was saying of how, um, you know, all of us who love Sting and Sting fans are kind of have those concerns of, would WWE just treat him like another WCW star and have Triple H squash him, uh, kind of like thing. You know, Sting is, even though WCW has been gone for 15 years, been off, well, 16, actually, 16 years since WCW has been gone, Sting has always um, been the last threshold, so to speak, of WCW. He truly is the final or last, I guess you say, dying memory of WCW and what that company represented um, when it was good, at least. Um you know, even when he, even when Sting was in, even when he was in TNA, you know, you still just had this this WCW legend, and him, and by him being the only guy, you know, WCW homegrown talent, and one of the biggest stars WCW has ever made themselves, which doesn't say much, but one of the biggest stars that WCW have made never come to WWE. That holds some stock and some value. Um, and then Sting's, uh, uh, you know, to me, it holds stock and value to and, and Sting. Um, it speaks vol volumes. Um, when Sting first came in uh, last week at Survivor Series, I know a lot of people were thinking, um, you know, Sting, Undertaker, and still waiting for Sting. Undertaker. And it could happen, maybe. I don't know. Um, but when I saw him interrupt with Triple H, I'm like, that's the WrestleMania match right there, Triple H Undertaker. I mean, Triple H, uh, Triple H Stain. Um, not to say that, you know, we might not get an Undertaker Stain match, but I doubt it we'll get it. Um, two reasons. One, I don't think Undertaker is physically capable of wrestling um, basically anymore. He may wrestle at next year's WrestleMania, maybe. But I just don't see him wrestle. I don't think he's capable enough, at least for, for well, not next year, because next year's 31. Uh, maybe WrestleMania 32, but definitely not WrestleMania 31, I don't think. Um, Michelle McCool has put, you know, videos and stuff of, of him on the on her Twitter or Instagram of him, you know, in everyday life. And he seems like, you know, outside the ring, he moves around pretty well. He moves around fine. But in terms of, you know, actually getting between those ropes and wrestling, I don't think Undertaker is physically capable. So because of that, I think they had no other choice but to go with a Triple H. Um, second thing, why I don't think we're going to get a Undertaker Sting match, because Sting himself, as a week, as we know as of right now, Sting says he's only going to do one match, and then he's going to ride off into the sunset. So Sting is going to do one, and then he's done. So he's doing a one and done. Uh, kind of like deal. Um, so because of that, I wouldn't mind, you know, I wouldn't mind it at all. And honestly, I think Sting is kind of smart 
to a degree, well, not even to a degree, but smart, period, uh, by having a one match, WrestleMania, that's it kind of like thing. I know a lot of me, some Sting fans may be disappointed, but like, oh man, I wish you could see Sting wrestle this guy and that guy, this and that. Here's the thing. I don't think Sting, personally, in my opinion, trusts this WWE to a full extent. I mean, to, to like, you know, I, I, I mean, I think he'll trust, I don't think he trusts the WWE all the way, but only to a certain extent or to a certain degree. Better word. To a certain degree. Um, I make these statements for certain reasons, for multiple reasons, actually. Um, I don't know if anyone ever remembers uh, a couple of years back, uh, maybe like six, seven years ago, TNA did a documentary on Sting. It was all about Sting. And in that documentary, uh, Sting was talking about how he remembered um, he, you know, was flicking through the channels and he saw, uh, you know, w, the WCW guys making their debut on Raw or SmackDown, whatever it was. He saw Booker T on, on television and then The Rock comes out. The Rock bumps up against Booker T. He turns around, looks at Booker T up and down and says, who are you? And Sting says that that moment right there uh, clarified to him as WWE say, or translating is WWE saying, who are you? You know, you're WCW, you're peons compared to us. And um, Sting says he wasn't sure how that was one of the reasons why he never came to WWE because he wasn't sure how well he didn't trust or wasn't sure how well they would use his character. Now, this is what Sting says. Now, one of the real reasons why Sting never came to WWE early on, at least, was because when WCW closed, Sting had a contract that Vince McMahon could not resume or could take over uh, because Sting's contract was not with WCW. It was with the parent company, AOL. Um, Sting, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, I know Goldberg, I think Bret Hart as well, and maybe Scott Hall. Not too sure about Scott Hall, but those first five guys I named, Sting, Goldberg, Kevin Nash, Hogan, Bret Hart, they had exclusive contracts with AOL where they would get paid X numbers of dollars, millions of dollars, excuse me, millions of dollars over a two to three year course. Sting's contract was with AOL. Um, so Sting only had two options. He either canceled his contract with AOL and sign up with WWE, or he sits at home for two or three years, okay, and collects a $2.5 to $3 million check a year from AOL, directly from AOL. And I've done research and, stuff, and AOL did not like handing out checks to like those type of guys like Goldberg and everything else that they had to pay. So that was one of the reasons why, one of the real reasons why Sting never came to WWE early on uh, after the closing of WCW. Um, same reason for Goldberg and Kevin Nash and Hol Hogan Hall, why they also didn't come into two years after the invasion. Uh, storyline because they had that deal with AOL. So if I was them, I'd stay home too. I mean, sit at home, collect a $2 million check for two years. I mean, I'd do it too. I'd sit at home as well. Um, so that was one reason. And then, and so, you know, the other reason I do think, you know, I do think Sting, that, that one statement that he made in that video, I do think Sting does kind of feel that way. Now there are now when he came to the Comic Con uh, this year, he said uh, Sting did say I, I heard him when he said, "Whoever said that I wasn't going to come to WWE, uh, I'm coming." I, I never said I wouldn't come to WWE. It was just a matter of timing, and you know, I had to. I talked to Vince, and I said I had you know make sure I dotted my eyes and crossed every T's, and the timing is now is now perfect. The the time is is, is now here. Um. I kind of called BS on Sting for saying that. I was like, who said I would never come to WWE? Um, I never said that. And I'm like, uh, you pretty much kind of did on that TNA DVD. I think that what Sting said, obviously, is for PR, obviously. And then secondly, I mean, out of the millions of people that watch WWE, who watches or even heard of TNA? So in his case, he could get away with that because probably only 100,000 people 
a hundred thousand or a hundred thousand people probably even know of that DVD's existence or watch that documentary of Stain. So it was, you know, Stain changed his tune a bit. He was at Comic Con, but I see why. Um, so, but still, I still do think in the back of his mind, I'm just saying all these things to say that I think still think that at the back of his mind, Stain does not really trust WWE totally and completely. I think he trusts them in terms of, you know, uh, using uh, the image of his character properly in terms of, you know, video games, the DVD, which I think sold really, the Sting DVD was sold really well. But being on the video games, getting licensing fees for like the, you know, the Sting, new Sting action figures and everything else that are coming out. I think he trusts how well they'll market his image. But in terms of staying the character on WWE television, I don't think staying um, really trusts WWE that much. I think he keep. I think he's keeping WWE at arm's length. I think he's saying one thing, but deep down he's really feeling something else. And I think by by him being away uh, from mainstream wrestling television for so many years, being that last threshold that last stable for of wcw coming into wwe and him being a veteran and a legend and icon that he is coming at this exact time i think the ball is more in sting's court than it is in wwe's court now sting would have came in you know say 15 years ago or 12 12, 13 years ago when they when wcw got bought out let's say if sting did come in I don't think Sting would have as much probably, uh, you know, stroke or probably wouldn't be able to get as much as a good of a deal that he probably has right now, uh, so to speak. So uh, I think that's 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 how I think that Sting feels. And then lastly, you know, people who complain, some people that compl- some people that are complaining, so oh, I think Sting's going to be he looks too old and this and that, blah, blah, blah. It's got to shape. I don't know what pipe are you smoking. Um, if you've never watched or even heard of TNA, Sting's been with TNA for nine years, nine or ten years. He's been in that company. Uh, whether you watch it or not, love it or hate it, doesn't matter. The point, the reason why I'm bringing up TNA and this fact is that he's been there for nine or ten years. He's been wrestling for nine or ten years. A pretty full schedule. He didn't start doing like part time until like maybe his last two or three years in that company. But before then, Sting was pushing full time in TNA um, wrestling, and he was just there in that company uh, less than a year ago. So by no means do I think Sting is out of shape or has any type of rain rust. So um, for those who think that, I think they need to kind of get that out of their heads. And Sting is in better shape at his age for a wrestler physically than Anybody I've seen, I think he's in better shape than Undertaker physically. I think he's in better shape than than Hulk Hogan. Um, I I think he I think Sting's even probably in better shape than Kurt Angle. I would say probably right now. Um, that's just my thing, my opinion on that. Uh, but you guys, let me know what you think uh, about Sting. Uh, this whole thought on this video. I want to hear your opinions in the box below. Comment, subscribe, peace.